Hey everybody, good evening. Welcome to our uh, Louise Hay self-healing class. Tonight's class is, we ask the question, do you truly know how to love yourself? And we're gonna explore that subject a little bit. Uh, we have a clip of a, just a couple minutes we wanna play for you. We're gonna do that now. And then we're gonna let you hear it in its entirety on Sunday. So let's talk about that power that Ernest was talking about tonight. From our Science of Mind textbook, I'm gonna read you a paragraph. Love is the greatest healing and drawing power on earth. It's the very reason our, for our being and it explains why it's important for people to love something or someone. Holmes went so far as to say, you are not living if you're not in some way loving. None of us can swing out in the universe without love as the whole universe is based upon it. And that was from page 298. Our greatest needs are to feel we are needed, that we are wanted, loved, and that we feel we belong, belong somewhere, and that we have things or people that we may love. The question for tonight for all of us is, do you love yourself? Um, that's the question. Ernest Holmes wrote and Louise Hay said that this power that we have works for us by working through us. It cannot work for us in any other kind of way. It is working everywhere all the time and with everyone. Once we have come to know this and we surrender, surrender, trying, trying to run the show, so to speak. Many of you I know well, some of you I don't know, but a lot of us in our life experience, our life has run amok in different ways. We've tried to do it our way. We've tried to push and we've tried to sh shove and we've tried to maybe even manipulate at different points in our life and our em evolution. So once we come to know that power works for us by working through us, and powers, this power is working everywhere and in everyone, what's for us to do? Well, what we're called to do is surrender, trying to run everything. I was once told many years ago, Greg, everything's okay. In religious science, we learn this phrase called perfect place, perfect time, and all the time. I had to think about that for many years. Perfect place, perfect time, and all the time, meaning all is really well, all is working out. And you could argue, and you could argue, and people have and they do, about everything that's wrong and what's wrong with life and wrong with people. And if you're about the conversation about what's wrong, then God bless you truly, because what you'll get from that conversation is an experience of what is missing, what's wrong, and what's, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's kind of like you develop what we call the chicken little consciousness. And I say that and I joke about that in classes often, the chicken little consciousness. Well, who was that little creature? Chicken little, I can barely rem remember. But I do recall it had one cry, and the cry is or was the sky is falling. So if that's who you are, if that's who you're showing up as, as a person who's doing ain't it awful and this is wrong and that's wrong, and if your life is all about fear and trepidation, then you're gonna create a very interesting healing uh, life for yourself, meaning you're gonna draw one experience to, after another to yourself as opportunities to heal. So in our teaching, and in any kind of recovery program that I've ever been associated with, and I've been affiliated as an active member for 40 years come July, once we come to know the word surrender, we make a decision to trust the process of life. We increasingly turn our life and our will over to this higher aspect of ourself, not something that's far off in a distant sky, but there's a part of us that's connected with everything that is good, a higher knowing, a higher place, a higher power, and we come to believe this power is restoring us. 
and we make a decision to turn our life and our will over to this higher part of ourselves, of which is one with all. Another well-known line among many of you, which I think I partially just said, we come to believe that this power, which somehow we are part of, is restoring us. Emerson suggested that this power is always wooing us. I know all through my life when I'm making a mistake, I automatically know. And it was said to me in our classes years ago in the 1990s by Bill Toller in Fort Lauderdale. He said, there is that which is within you that always knows when you're goofing up. You have an internal guidance system. When you're off, no one has to punish you. You punish yourself because there's a part of you that's always connected to what is right and what is true. So let me paraphrase for you for a moment an old scripture. The kingdom of good is at hand. Everything you could ever want or need is available to you right now. The presence and the power are here, in you, operating through you, right now. The question for tonight is, will you let it in? Will you let it operate through you? Will you let it give expression by means of you in your life? And the question I'd ask you again, which I'm reminded of from a song recently, don't you think it's time? I had a partner years ago who passed away in 1990, and he was very fond of saying, this is not a dress rehearsal. And I'm, every time I think of him and I smile because he knew something I knew. I was all caught up in stuff. Are you caught up in stuff? Are you protesting everything? Are you have the sense of outrage? Do you live with indignation? Do you, are you kind of like chicken little? Are you worried about everything? Are you participating in a lot of things that are taking you away from the God, the good, the glory, which is yours, moment by moment? You have the choice to be in a place where you see the good, or you can also be in another place where you're all riled up all the time. It's entirely up to you. You'll hear me quote often Bill Tolliver because he was such a great teacher. And there was a horrible economic recession going on in Florida years ago. And you've heard me say before, he put on the marquee of that most wonderful place, the corner of 26th, and I can't remember what it was, Andrews, I think. We heard there is a recession and huge letters. And he, then he put underneath it, we are not participating. So that lesson is, I won't say haunted me, but I will say informed me for at least, I don't know, a lot of years. Just because everybody's saying something and just because everybody's doing something and everybody's outraged, you who are practicing this teaching can understand something else. Everything is always evolving in goodness. It, the world is healing and evolving towards wholeness. And sometimes as you journey towards wholeness, you encounter things along the way that don't look whole and don't look pretty. Everything that's happening is happening for your higher good and greater glory. Uh, there's a line from the Course in Miracles that you who know me know I love well, which is it takes great wisdom to understand that all circumstances, happenings, and events are helpful. It takes great wisdom to understand that it's all happening for the good. If you live with that kind of consciousness, you are a healer among healers and you get to lift up the whole world because you're a person that is not going to be ruffled or taken off track. I remember years ago being on a panel of ministers. I can remember them each. And there was a young guy wanting to be a practitioner minister, and he was there to answer all his questions. And we were the older group sitting there. In his oral test, he said, he said his answer was, I am a healer. And see, I know that isn't really the right answer. <laughs> so I tried to kind of like give him a little nudge and say, do you want to say that in another way? 
Uh, but he didn't catch my hint, and he kind of like didn't pass the test either that time around. He needed to learn a little bit more. He wasn't a healer. Louise Hay wasn't a healer. Greg Hart is not a healer. Ernest Holmes is a... None of us are healers, right? It's spirit within that is the healer. Spirit does the healing work. So the question is, what is ours to do in the process of healing? What's ours to do? That's the better question. What can we do to heal and be part of the healing process? Who have we come here to be in this place that is not a dress rehearsal, this place which is so brief and goes by so quickly? Your magnificent, glorious life, let it count. Let it count for love, let it count for self-expression, let it count for being part of a solution, let it count for using your, even if you're protesting, protest in a place where you're not coming from anger, come from a place where you're coming from connection and love. Because your time on earth is, is a brief, wonderful expression of love and life. Mm -hmm. Louise Hay, in regarding healing, would say, all healing is self-healing. Let us go for a moment to the passage in the New Testament. And if the translation can be trusted because it's many, many, many hundreds of years old from the ancient Aramaic to the Greek and then to the English, and you know how it goes with language. And we don't even think that Jesus called himself the healer either. Instead, it's thought that he said, the Father or the Spirit within doeth the work. The healing work, if anything, what he, what he was referring to was the healing consciousness that he had. Any person who's a self-actualized person who knows that they're one with the one has the ability to heal anything. Spirit and I are one is the lesson for all of us to always remember. Spirit and I are one. God and I are one. You might like thinking of spirit as love because to my way of thinking, they are synonyms anyway. Um, practitioners practice seeing the good or the God, the good or the God. As we practice this teaching, we might think of spirit or love needs to be invited into our thoughts. Love needs to be invited into our hearts and our minds and having that consciousness of unity and oneness, when we have the consciousness of unity and oneness, our way, our pathway is made clear. When we learn to live the affirmative life that Ernest Holmes so eloquently said in his Sermon by the Sea, find me one person who's for something and against nothing, and I will have found the redeemer of my soul. <clears throat> find me one person who's so redeemed from the bondage of self and his littleness, and his opinions, his small opinions, and I will find the redeemer of my heart. I have a long way to go. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> it's certainly a practice. Practice, 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 seeing the God, seeing the good. Spirit needs to be invited into our hearts, our consciousness, this loving presence. It's all about consciousness, everybody, in case you haven't figured it out. Some 15 or 20 years ago, people discovered something that's been around since the beginning of time. They decided to call it the law of attraction. It became, it swept the nation in a movie called The Secret. I'm sure some of you have seen it. There was a book also. There was a beloved, beautiful black genie, gorgeous man up in the sky. He said one line, he had a great line. Your wish is my command. Your wish is my command. Your wish is my command. People want healing. People so want healing. Where's the Louise Hayes book? Okay, it's over there. There's a reason for the love of God that a book like this will sell 65 million copies and be translated into 27 languages. People just don't spend that kind of money for no reason. People want healing. What kind of healing do they want? Every kind of healing. Every kind of healing. They want healing. It's a big business. I go into 12-step programs in 
But I've been in Miami and Washington and Boston and New York, and I see these beautiful lives which have been destroyed by alcohol and drugs, really at the edge where they've lost everything. And they're using everything to make themselves feel better. And there's no substance on earth that can fill up that void. There's no person, there's no amount of sex, there's no relationship, there's no anything that can fill up that void. So people want to fill up that void. People want to feel better. People want to heal. A sponsor I had in a 12-step program 40 years ago now said to me, Greg, you can have most anything you want <laughs> if you're willing to pay the price. And I thought, wow, that's a brilliant line. You can have most anything you want if you're willing to pay the price. It was Emerson through Holmes that said, said that we pay for everything in spiritual coin, meaning we don't really get away with anything. So what's the point of even, even trying? We pay for everything in spiritual coin. What we give out comes back to us. If you're going to be negative, 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 I promise you it comes back to you. If you're going to be cheap, the universe is going to be cheap with you. <laughs> Life loves a giver. It's one of our basic lessons. Give, 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 and give some more. Because when you're giving, you're trusting life. When you're giving, you're becoming a participant. When you're giving, you're giving of yourself, your heart, your love, your time. And I promise you, all of that comes back to you in multiplied many times over. So people want... People want, think that word want, it kind of like sounds like a baby, right? Wah, wah, wah. People want, I think them drag, out, drag it out a few syllables. They want more money, they want better self-esteem, they want peace, they want more. People want more. They just want more. <laughs> Seriously. People want to end conflict, too. Inner conflict. The best way to get rid of the outer conflict in the world is to take care of the inner conflict within ourselves. People want not to be afraid of so many things. Germs, diseases, pandemics. My generation was AIDS. I remember going out to a dinner with the person I was trying to take care of and people wouldn't serve us at a table because they thought they could catch it through delivering the food at the table. You know, I remember going into hospitals where people didn't want to get near anybody because you were the untouchables. Seriously, people want to change everything. They want to end the conflict in the world. But the, really where it always begins is within mind. Inner conflict will, when you heal it, you'll start to realize how okay you are with the world around you. People want not to be afraid of so many things. There is so much fear. There's lots of fear and lots of worry, and it's percolating, and it's ruminating inside of people's heads and hearts right now. And I was thinking about it as I was putting this lesson together last night and today. I wish to tell you I'm really, really grateful, 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 first for my parents and the lessons that they gave me, because even though I thought they were terrible at the time, they were both quite wonderful. And then somehow, through the grace of the universe, somebody put an audio tape that was meant for somebody else into my hands. And that tape, which was a part of the book, You Can Heal Your Life, really changed my whole existence and helped make me be the person I am today. During, with a stream of positive messages, my life started to turn around. And why do I talk about myself? Because I, I really want to give bones and flesh to this. You know, you can change, you can heal, but you've got to want to. You've got to want it. You've got to want it. You have to have the willingness to make the changes. And the changes are all internal. They're not external. It was my inner pain in my early 20s. Most people didn't know I had inner pain. Everybody thought I was probably privileged and spoiled rotten. Uh, with that pain and that sense of uh, desperation, I entered a 12-step program in 1980 that suggested I needed to do a couple things differently. One phrase that jumped out, which I've already mentioned, was surrender to win. 
And I was never taught, up to, taught to give up anything. We were fighters, we were achievers, we were super achievers. And then I entered into this place where the philosophy, the, the repeated idea, was to <laughs> give up the fight and pick up a white. <laughs> Surrender to win. And, I, and I, I, you know, I needed to do something because I was up against everything. I was feeling miserable often, and I was faking it. You know what I mean by faking it? You're showing up, you're dressing the part, you're wearing the clothes, you, you know, you're walking through the ropes, you're, you're trying to be that person. I could, you know, I was a class president in school, I was all things to many people. But I wasn't integrated on the inside and outside. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. Uh, I, w I became willing to make a change. I became willing at last, at last, to listen and learn something new. To put on a new pair of glasses, that would be the Chuck C. C influence. That was an important first step, surrendering. And somehow, through the grace of God or goodness, the w willingness came into my heart and mind to do something different. And that very same willingness can enter your heart and mind, and willingness to change will open up every door for you. Because all doors will remain shut as long as you stay stuck on wherever you are. People want to have great lives. <laughs> They, they want to have happiness. They want to have good health. Mm. They want good relationships. Absolutely. They want some other good stuff, and I won't even give words to it, but they want it. And sadly, most people are just left wanting. That's truly pitiful in such an abundant world that we live in. They want to be super attractors, which is the phrase that Gabby Bernstein has uh, invented to make herself the superstar of the next generation, according to Oprah Winfrey. Her books are for the next generation, and she's teaching precisely what we teach. And she's using the ideas which we talk about every week. But we're going to learn from her, too, because she's, she's got the whole social media game down, and we're committed to uh, learning that week by week. I have several people in this room who are here helping me do it as we speak. So what I'm getting at here with Gabby Bernstein, with Louise Hay, with The Secret, with all these books, there is absolutely nothing new about new thought. It's been around since the, the beginning, if there was a beginning. There's nothing new about new thought. It's timeless, it's ageless. Every generation speaks of what we teach here. Some speak on a deeper level than others. Some are eloquent, some are simple. I spent a number of years myself reading and studying and studying and reading and reading and studying Ralph Waldo Emerson. And of course, he can take your breath away. If you take the time to read his essays and read them aloud and take in what he had to say. It said, a few, a very few from each generation will discover Ralph Waldo Emerson. If you don't really have that type of determination, as I did, I'm happy to report to you this very book, You Can Heal Your Life, can bring you the healing that you're looking for. So what I'm trying to say is it doesn't need to be a heady or a scholarly pursuit. It, what, it, what is required is a willingness to take a look at your conversation, the inner dialogue you're having with you. You, 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 the most important person on earth in your world is you. And when you're willing to do that and, and surrender and know that you're a part of something bigger, Ernest Holmes said, there's power for good in the universe greater than you of which you are a part and you can use this power. He also implicitly said you are using this power all the time. So when you look at your life right now, and you're looking at your relationships, and if they're in trouble and, and there's miscommunication, and you know if your money supply is wrong and your health is off, listen, run to the person in the mirror, quiet yourself down, calm yourself down, 
and say to yourself, all is well. And everything is perfect. Because it is. You have the consciousness that have drawn to you all the things that have been in your life up till now. And you are the person who also can heal everything that's in your life right now. There can be conflict everywhere. There does not need to be conflict within you. You've heard it said, if you're in a 12-step program, misery is optional. Ernest Holmes in our textbook said, suffering is not God-ordained. Same idea. Louise Hay was crystal clear when she said, I am not a healer. I don't heal anyone, anybody. She said, I think of myself as a stepping stone on a pathway of self-discovery. She started out as a practitioner right here with us, our church, our center, formerly First Church of Religious Science New York, now the great first center for spiritual living, New York City. Louise had her home here. So did Raymond Charles Barker, author of Power of Decision. Students. Uh, one of our most famous students, rather, was Louise Hay. Uh, the very book I've shown you twice tonight, You Can Heal Your Life, uh, was written by her, and she did her studying right here where we are, in our center. She was a student, studied here, published her first book here, and that was some 25 years ago. Again, what did she say? I don't heal anyone. I create a space where people can learn how incredibly wonderful they are. Mm -hmm. So I'm reminding you tonight of Louise Hay's words. Each of you, you're incredibly wonderful. And wherever this recording goes beyond, because we're starting to develop a following outside of New York, I'm here to remind you how incredibly wonderful you are. We now have 25 lessons developed, which each week I'm improving, since our audience is now expanding and expanding. So we can take a little bit deeper look. You know, and what I really want to, want to do is give you a bigger reminder of how wonderful you are. Then the flip side of that is we'll be talking about the things that come up within us that get in the way of us experiencing the wonder of who we are, okay? Our classes are a space where people are reminded of how great they are and of the possibilities that exist in this very brief existence that we have. And so I'm going to always invite you to drop the story, drop the defense, defenses, drop the defending so you can be here now. Yes. Ernest Holmes suggested we carry around a lot of dead wood, and the dead wood would be all the stories. And the stories that we carry prevent us from being really in the moment. And that's it's really what a pity. Because, you know, we can be here having a lot of fun. And we can be creating lives that are prosperous and wonderful with great people attracting all the things we want. Uh, changes, my note to myself, can be quick when people are willing and committed to loving themselves. If you're waiting for other people to save you, rescue you, you're in for a long wait. But changes can be quick when people are willing and committed to loving themselves. After years of individual counseling clients, this is Louise now, and conducting hundreds of workshops and intensive trainings, I could be writing the same thing myself, <laughs> across my case, Florida, but her case, the country, she said, I find only one thing that heals every person and every problem. And that was, of course, to know how to love themselves. There's a reason every Thursday night I ask you guys a simple question. What has it been like being you this week? Mm -hmm. And you probably know me well enough right now to know I'm never really wanting the drama, the story. I'm really wanting you to be starting to think about what your inner dialogue has been like. Because that is the very thing that's creating your world. So back to, to we, Louise once more. 
The one thing that heals every problem and every person ultimately is learning how to know to love themselves and to elevate that conversation. When people start to love themselves more and more each day, it's amazing how their lives get better. I'm telling you, Benjamin Franklin was teaching this right back in the 1700s too, you know, with his, <laughs> his whole thing was assume a virtue if you have it not. And he had like a 13 week chart. He kept working with the virtue. When you begin to love yourself, everything in your life begins to change. The thing is, you have to have the willingness to go there. And you have to have the willingness to drop the story. You need to be able to surrender the baloney and invite spirit into the picture. Okay. Come to believe something greater than you of which you are a part can <laughs> move you forward in ways that you could never do on your own. My father used to say to me, Greg, spirit will never be the uninvited guest. So invite spirit in. Align yourself with the power that is yours. Okay. As you learn to love yourself, your relationships will improve or they will dissolve. And if they dissolve, they were not meant to be in your life. You're meant to be, you know, in, in all kinds of good situations and earning good money. And, uh, you know, we develop a consciousness here of having. We have good, 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 good circumstances and good people. And, uh, um, and that really will all emanate out of your self-esteem. So... Join us on Thursday nights to be in part of this important discussion. This, by the way, is lesson 20 we're having tonight. So we're talking about a very simple premise, loving yourself. Uh, Louise said she's been criticized for years for being too simplistic. Didn't really bother her too much. She became more successful than the whole New Thought movement, it seems, <laughs> in her simplicity. And... She said, I've found that the simple things usually are the most profound. Someone once said to her, you gave me the most wonderful gift. You gave me the gift of myself. So many of us hide from ourselves and we don't even know who we are. We don't know what we feel. We don't know what we want. Life is a voyage of self-discovery. Socrates, or some old wise person said, whoever put on the... <laughs> on the temple to Apollo at Delphi, you know, to thine own self be true and know thyself. To me, an enlightened, to be enlightened is to go within and to know who and what we really are. And to know that we have the ability to change for the better by loving and taking care of ourselves. It's not selfish to love ourselves. It clears us up so we can love ourselves enough to love other people. We can really help the planet when we come from a space of great love and joy on an individual basis. The power that created this incredible universe has often been referred to as, as love. If Theodora were here tonight, she would say, God is love. We've often heard that statement, God, love makes the world go round. And it is true, love is the binding agent that holds the whole thing together. To me, love is a deep appreciation. When I talk about loving ourselves, I mean having a deep appreciation for who we are and who our fellows are. I don't believe in bad people. I've had that discussion this week with a couple of my friends. I believe everybody's doing the best they can with what they got. Some of us have been given a lot more. We've had parents that have been extraordinary. Um, and some of us have come from places where we haven't had that, and we've still risen. But we know that everyone's doing the best that they can with the information and the understanding and the awareness that they have. So uh, that's the truth we celebrate here. We're now in the midst of enormous individual and global change, said Louise, all those years ago. And it seems appropriate for right now. I believe that all of us who are living at this time chose to be here or somehow came about to be here and part of these, these changes to bring about change and 
to transform the world from the old way of life to a more loving and peaceful existence. We are in charge of our life. We have the power and we are the power that we have been seeking. So look into the mirror and know that you are supplied and supported and say to yourself, I love myself the way I am. Because that's where you begin is with the self. And start noticing your thoughts and your thinking. And if you think a negative thought, say cancel, cancel, cancel. And replace it with a positive one. Call me, call Joyce, call Judith. We will teach you how to do affirmative prayer. Come into our classes. I don't, this building will open in another week. You can come in and make an appointment. I'll teach you personally. We'll have classes. We'll find a way to teach it on Zoom. But we're available to you every single day we are here. So let's begin right now in this moment to choose love. It's the most powerful healing force there is. And the best thing to know that you are one with it. You always have been invited into your life. And so it is for this evening.